Hey everyone, Marty Mazar. Good morning. 30th of January 2019. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes, a few minutes maybe. Update the chart that I've been sharing with you of late. This morning I shared my entry to our internal market log and I finished with a comment that the technicals are supporting uh, our view that odds favor the upside in the near term. And I thought I'd share with you just real quickly what I was talking about as I update the charts this morning. So again, regular watchers and readers are familiar with this chart. We started looking at it in here, talked about resistance at 2600, made it through there, almost tested it. Then we were talking about serious resistance here at the 50 day moving average plus 2300 on the S&P. And holding that, having a real nice bounce off of that today. Boeing issued great earnings this morning. Apple did okay last night. Market's in the mood to buy these stocks today and take the rest of the market with it to some degree. Although the Dow seeing a real outsized move this morning relative to other averages because Boeing and Apple are in that very concentrated index. I'm going to talk about this little trend line here in a second. So, um, all looks good. We have to test our downward sloping trend line here, see if we can get through that. You can see we may be getting close to that soon. 2700 looks important. Of course, the 200 day moving average is going to be something to contend with. And then I see real resistance here at 2800. Frankly, it's just going to take really good news. And I think on more than anything else, these trade talks to get us up to testing the September all time highs. Okay, so in terms of the technicals, I've shared with you in the past one of my favorites, and it's probably one of my favorites because it's so easy to understand for me. And it's called on balance volume. This line right here accumulates volume on a daily basis. It moves the line up by the number of shares traded hands in an up day and down by the number of shares trading hands in a down day for the S&P 500. So obviously when we have more volume on the up days, over time that suggests there's more passion on the part of the buyers. When we have more volume on the down days, that suggests that the sellers are very much in charge. So here we have the move or the big spike on January 18th, fell off of that, came back, and a week later just about tested that right there. So we have a couple of real short-term tops right in here. So you see some resistance. We're about to test that again. And that little very short term line is going to run into some double resistance with this longer term trend line. So we'll see how that goes. But notice how while this pointed downward slightly, slightly downward slope, the on balance volume for the two peaks was actually higher. So the move in here to the upside was met with really high volume relative to the move to the downside, suggesting that buyers are anxious to get into this market in force. Now we did see pretty good down volume here. Now, if that were to create a lower low, then that would pretty much negate this bullish move. This right here has, this is today. This will move higher. Today continues. I last looked and volume was about 8% above the 20 day average. So that might be a nice up move today if volume continues to kick up. Right now, the Dow's up 376 points, which is one and a half percent. This case, the S&P is up almost 1%, up 25 points this morning. That's a very impressive move. Clearly, there's optimism about what the Fed's going to say this morning at 11 o'clock Pacific time and about the trade talks that are going on this morning and tomorrow between the U.S. and China. The market has given huge incentives for all of the policymakers to behave themselves and to work for legitimate positive deals. It'll keep global trade moving and keep uh, interest rates at a realistic level relative to economic conditions of late, which have been waning as we've talked about here. Okay, so on balance volume shows what would be a bullish divergence in the very short term. This is very constructive as well. If I take this point to this point, that's still pretty negative, whereas we're almost flat here. Another day or two of this, and that would be a bullish divergence as well. So that says good things about the internals. I want to share with you three more. Here's two of them. So here's a five-year daily chart of the S&P 500. 
Here's the moving average convergence divergence, and here's the relative strength index. Both of these we would call momentum oscillators. I don't really use these for the buy and sell signals or the overbought and oversold signals when I'm looking at it from a long-term investment perspective. What I'm looking for are divergences in either direction. And th these are pretty good. They're not perfect. They don't always work. But right now, they are telling us here, for example, here's the S&P moving higher. Notice the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, did not. In fact, it was flat as a pancake while the S&P was going up. So that says that near-term momentum was waning and there was a chance for this thing to roll over. Right in here, this and other indicators were telling me that to, we should expect a rough patch. And I wrote an article about right in here on the 10th of September that said, expect a rough patch. And lo and behold, did we get a rough patch? I was not expecting, by the way, a 19.5% peak to trough decline. So here we are coming out of it. Notice we have still, we're still very much in a downward sloping trend, but notice the MACD very much moving higher. Increase in momentum on the near term, that's bullish. That's a bullish divergence. Relative strength index, maybe that's a little generous here. Also, bullish divergence there. Those are good technical signs. And then lastly, if I had to pick one longer term that, that I say gives us the most legitimate signal, it would be this breadth indicator, and it's the cumulative advanced decline line. What this one does is basically takes number of stocks that are advancing each day for the S&P, subtract from that the number of declining shares. Obviously, when the trend is higher, there are more advancers than decliners, and that would be positive breadth. When it's lower, that would be more decliners than advancers. So we look for trends here as well and compare those to the S&P 500. Notice here back in 2007, the S&P 500 had a higher high, but the advanced decline line didn't. It actually had a lower high. And that was a warning sign that maybe something was going to happen here to the downside, and boy, did it ever. Here we have the S&P with a lower high, but we have the advanced decline line looking more constructive. And sure enough, this was a signal that this, things were going to get better, and we've had this nice long move here all the way up into that 2014 to 2016 consolidation pattern for both the S&P 500 as well as the AD line. But notice here back in March of 2016, the AD line broke out of that pattern and moved decisively upward while the S&P stayed in its box. But this was a signal that things were getting better, a bullish trend was taking over, and that we should expect a break from this consolidation box. And that's exactly what we got. Then we came in here to 2018. Here is the latest correction peak to trough. Here we are bouncing out of it. Notice the advanced decline line. It is about to move into a new all-time high. That is very bullish in terms of what it says about what's going on underneath the surface of the market. So all that said, we have huge downside risk to this market. If the Fed today, for example, for whatever reasons, and I would be very surprised if they do this, come out and sound hawkish um, cite the good things they see in the economy, the jobs numbers, and ignore the concerning things that they see not only in the U.S. economy, but the global economy. This market would not welcome anything other than no interest rate hike, and we're going to be very patient and data dependent. During the conference call, if the, if the statement doesn't reference it, there's going to be a question about the balance sheet. Now, that's all the bonds and mortgage-backed securities that the Fed took off of banks' balance sheets and put onto their own to the tune of almost $5 trillion at one point. After they stopped creating money essentially and buying those bonds, they would continue to reinvest all the interest and principal payments that came in. Now they're letting that roll off to the tune of $50 billion a month. Back in October, when asked about the balance sheet, the chairman said it's on autopilot and the Dow went down like 700 points on that news. Since then, he has said that basically it's in play. He needs to reiterate that as well, and I think he will. This correction was a surprise. It was shocking. It deviated markedly, I think, from the fundamentals, and it did show that there is an appetite for selling in this market. And that much of a decline could do a real number on sentiment. I, last night, I showed you the chart on consumer expectations going forward. And indeed, I think the stock market correction has more than a little bit to do with that. And when consumers stop feeling good, they stop spending and the economy starts hurting. So everybody is aware of this phenomenon. 
We don't see a lot of inflation. Fed really doesn't need to be real tight right now. The real risk is in Washington, and that is the personalities that are playing this game with China. And on our side of the table, there was a real argument going on between the four key players. Two of them want to put this thing to bed. Two of them would like to keep it alive longer. The president, I think, wants to put it to bed because he can see firsthand what it's doing to the markets. And of course, there are political implications as well as economic implications here. So as I said in this morning's commentary, event risk skews to the upside. As I just told you, the technicals skew to the upside. A misstep, particularly on trade. And believe me, we'll be having a very different conversation over the next few days and weeks. Thank you as always for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Take care.